thank hi Jenny, thank you. Um, I suppose the first point I wanted to make, I think Arjun's absolutely right that this um, toxic culture is off-putting to voters and to readers a lot of the time, but we are kind of caught in that trap because uh, conflict is newsworthy and everyone getting on nicely isn't as newsworthy often. So I did a story at the weekend about a row between Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak over education spending. If that negotiation had all gone through and it was all absolutely fine and everybody was getting on, that wouldn't be a story. So there is something built into news that is often inherently around conflict. Um, but I think what's happened recently, certainly since I started writing about politics, in back in 96 actually is that conflict and polarization has become much much more uh built into the political system and it's not just the party structures you know labor versus tory prime minister versus leader of the opposition as it used to be at prime minister's question time it's it's much more cultural uh ideological almost moral so people don't any longer have a difference of opinion about policy. It's they're right, they're wrong, you're wrong, you know, I'm moral, you're almost evil for disagreeing. And I think that has then seeped sometimes into the media coverage as well. Um, I th I, the other thing I think is interesting, and I'm interested what the broadcasters feel about this, is I think sometimes for the sake of kind of balance, um, conflict is built into discussion. So you have to, I found it myself, if I'm on a panel, I have to represent a particular point of view. And, and that makes it very difficult to say, well, you're there to represent a particular point of view up against someone else on the other side. And actually quite often the truth is on the one hand and on the other hand. Um, so it's quite difficult to have a nuanced discussion in that context that obviously that the whole Brexit referendum put that onto, speed or steroids whatever the analogy is it made it very um uh divided polarized one side the other side and that that has though i think continued um and i think also um i, I think there's a difference between in interviews between broadcast interviews and newspaper interviews so broadcast interviews have to be much more confrontational because they're it's almost like a stage managed showdown between the journalist and politician um, with newspaper interviews, you can be a little bit more, uh, less confrontational, you're trying to find out the information uh, and you're, you're trying to sort of get good quotes out of them, but you're not necessarily trying to have a, a on-air punch-up or sort of staged conflict. Um, so I think there's differences between different bits of the media there. Uh, and also, I, I, I suppose, between the tabloids and the broadsheets in newspaper terms. So the media, I think you can't lump it all completely together. Um, uh, on the other side, though, I do think that the media, uh, as Katie was saying, has a really important role to play in rising above the increasingly kind of polarised world of social media, and that if we can do anything, it's standing up against fake news, really setting out what the truth is, making sure that we say there is a truth, that it isn't all relative, um, it isn't just about opinion, that there are facts um, and that facts matter. Uh, and I really do think that that's something important that the media can do, and that's a kind of noble cause, if you like. Um, and that isn't about conflict, that is something positive that um, we can do. And also, um, really importantly, a lot of the nastiness on social media is associated with anonymity. Uh, and we have our names to our pieces or our faces on air. Um, and that's that's quite an important thing. There's an accountability to that, uh, which really matters. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think we can, if, if we get it right, we can sort of be, certainly as economists, it's possible to be a slightly still put small voice of calm, that it doesn't have to be all ranty and ravey and, you know, conflict and bust ups the whole time. Um, and actually, I think there's a public appetite for a little bit more, um, not happy news. I thought Martin Lewis got it wrong. People don't just want everything to be fluffy and happy clappy, but they do want reason. They do want um, calm debate. They don't want everything to be conflictual and confrontational. And I think actually viewers and readers are, are, and, um, and voters are slightly put off by um this polarization and the endless punch-ups um 
So in a way, if I think we could, if the two sides speed off each other, so the, the political system and the media system have got into this vicious circle of conflict and polarised debate. Um, but I don't think it necessarily has to be like that. And actually, I think there's an appetite for something different. But maybe I'm over idealising it. <laughs>